This video will be going over how Illumina sequencing, a type of next-generational sequencing, works. This diagram is produced by Illumina, and it will be used as a guide for this video. The first step is to prepare the genomic DNA sample, or library. These basic first steps are found in all sequencing methods because a strand cannot be sequenced if it is too large or if it is already double-stranded. Therefore, the DNA is fragmented into short pieces of about 300 to 800 base pairs long and then denatured at 95 degrees Celsius into single strands. If a large piece of DNA, such as when sequencing a genome, the fragments of the DNA are aligned by bioinformatics tools after the sequencing. Adapters are needed to be ligated on the ends of the fragments in order to get the sequence to anneal to where the DNA sequence can be determined by the sequencing machine. The adapter constructs added to the DNA sequence of interest have flow cell binding sites of P5 and P7, which allow the P5 and P7 regions of the single-stranded DNA library fragments to anneal to their complementary oglios of the flow cell surface. This means if one of the DNA fragments, P5, anneals to the flow cell, it will anneal by attaching to a P7 oglios that is attached to that flow cell, and vice versa. Several samples can be loaded on the 8-lane flow cell for simultaneous analysis. Next is the amplification of each of the sequences. In this step, the sequence makes a kind of bridge shape when it is being copied. Hence the term bridge amplification, which is used in the Illumina sequencing. Unlabeled nucleotides and polymerase enzymes are added to initiate the solid phase bridge amplification. Next, the frag fragments become double-stranded through sequencing. The reagents needed for sequencing are added. These are primers, which start the sequencing, nucleotides to form the new sequence, polymerase to actually sequence the nucleotides together, and a buffer to keep the pH at an optimum level for the enzymatic reaction. The flow cell oglios act as primers and a strand complementary to the library fragment is synthesized. Next, you denature the double-stranded molecules. The original strand is washed away, leaving behind the fragment copies that are covalently bonded to the flow cell surface in a mixture of orientations. Next, amplification is repeated multiple times. The steps 5 through 7 of the addition of sequencing reagents, creation of doubled stranded DNA, and the denaturation are repeated multiple times to create thousands of identical copies of the same sequence in each cluster. In other words, each cluster is made up of thousands of identical sequences, and each cluster has a different fragment of the original largest sequence of interest. After the amplification, the first phase must be determined. The P5 region is cleaved, resulting in clusters containing only fragments which are attached by the P7 region. This ensures that all copies are sequenced in the same direction. The sequencing primer anneals to the P5 end of the fragment and begins the sequencing by synthesis process. The reagents needed to sequence are the primers to start the sequencing, fluorescently labeled nucleotides to form and detect the base added to each cluster, polymerase to actually add the nucleotides to the forming strand, and buffer to keep the pH at an optimum level for enzymatic reaction.